Talked About a Male Male Romance podcast where we celebrate all things male male romance. I am Jessica. And I'm Murky. And this is our April bottom episode. Yep, we got a lot of cool things to talk about. But first, we wanted to remind everyone that we do have some reader groups that you can get into to discuss our bottom books of the month or anything cool that you enjoy, series that you fall in love with along the way, or things that you've loved forever that you want to share with people. We have a Goodreads group and a Facebook group. Um, and the Facebook group is linked to our top to bottom Facebook page. It's under groups, so you can go find it easily that way. And I'll link it in the show notes too, just in case. Also, uh, we do have a Patreon that has some cool bonuses. Did you know we actually started something kind of new on our Patreon? When we have the information to give, we're going to start announcing who we're going to be interviewing as soon as we get the information. So usually it's about a week or two out. We'll try to let our Patreons know which author we're going to be interviewing for an upcoming episode. And if you are a patron, you can actually submit questions for us to ask the author. So definitely go in and jump in on that. We're also going to be adding the opportunity, if you are a patron, to hear our ridiculous bloopers. Yeah. It's going to be a once a year thing because it takes a lot of time to put into this, but you would be amazed how difficult it is to talk sometimes. Yeah, we're, we're giving away a dirty little secret here. We sound like we know what we're doing because editing is awesome and Jess is really good at it. <laughs> so yeah, I think Jess is going to start compiling all of our weirdness and flubs and giggle fits and mispronunciations of funny things yeah you would be amazed at how many ways you can pronounce the word podcast yeah yeah that first minute is always the hardest (laughs) so yeah patreon yeah patreon go do it because you love us Mm -hmm. also you should go to whatever you're listening to us on and rate us five stars because again you love us indeed it helps us get exposure for other people to find us easier so if you search mail mail romance if we have a good rating it'll pop up and people can fall in love with us we'll live happily ever after or at least keep doing podcasts as long as we can yeah exactly (laughs) so on our top episode we announced we had a easter egg hunt for the day in the life of marlon bundo book from Mm -hmm. john oliver so for this uh, just to recap we had a whole bunch of amazing authors hide a little egg with our logo somewhere in the depths of their website on their websites which is amazing because they got kind of sneaky about a lot of this dude some of them i think (laughs) i'm trying to remember what the hardest ones were sloan got mean (laughs) yeah sloan was was hilarious that one took me a minute like it was finding the right book page and then scrolling all the way down and there was a slideshow yeah and within the slideshow was the egg yeah i was like that is so vicious i love it so yeah there was uh, and there was there was another one that was really tough, and I can't remember which one it was. I mean, a lot of it was having to know which, like, because there was, like, book pages. Okay. A lot of them did it on the contact page, which was cool. Let's see. Oh, Amy Nicole Walker buried hers. She did a story, too, right? Yes. Yeah. So she had a story that she wrote just for the hunt, which was super cool. And if you, even if you weren't able to go do the hunt, go read that story because it's fantastic. So she buried the egg in the story too, which was awesome. Yeah. And Jex Lane had hers in the, in her BMO art. Oh stuff, yeah. That was awesome. Um, with the Hiroto stickers, which was great. So we did, we had a lot of people join the hunt and we had our winner, which was Eileen H. So congratulations, Eileen. We've already gotten her, her book. So awesome. That was super fun. And we'll hopefully do more events like this in the future because that was just super fun. The whole ride was was awesome yeah i i love that authors got into it and really took the time to you know stash the eggs somewhere fun and i love that our so many readers jumped out and wanted to hunt everything down it was awesome yeah in march we had interviewed you know, mila abraham she was the creator and writer of to trust an incubus which is a visual novel dating sim male male romance of course mm-hmm. and that has actually come to its conclusion it's over they are super funded they hit a lot of their stretch goals yes we're really excited we got the email today that the kickstarter had ended and what all the stretch goals were that they hit to today the day we're recording not yes today, yeah right. exactly yeah. <laughs> the day we're recording yeah so a lot of the stretch goals got missed the one i was most excited about well the one we were most excited about was all characters are versatile so yes. you can have tops and bottoms no matter the characters so that's awesome there's a someone gets a sexy spanking stretch goal that got hit so that'll be fun to find out who gets mm-hmm. that Oh, and one of the better ones, a full voice acting for everyone. So that's really amazing. Like, we're really, really excited about the the sexy spanking and the versatile, but the voice acting is awesome. That really makes the game, like, shifts the tone of the game and, and all kinds of fun stuff, so... Yeah, so those were the stretch goals that got hit. If you were on the Kickstarter, like you should have been, because we told you to, <laughs> in the we got funded or we're, we're done with the campaign email, we got all of the naked chibis. Yes. Those were adorable and weird. Yeah, I was like, we were discussing <laughs> it too, because it's like, I'd never seen naked chibis before. 
So it was one of those, like, it's cute, but there's peen. Yep. And it's chibi peen. And I remember her talking about that. And it just, like, I was like, oh, that sounds cool. But in my brain, I guess it didn't register. Like, what does that look like? Yep. Now, now I know. know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, a fun thing that's in my brain now. Can't unsee that. Cannot unsee. Yeah. So I guess before we get into discussing our bottom pick, we did give ourselves some challenge books for the month. Right, because we always have such a hard time when we actually have like extra time to read whatever we want to read. Mm-hmm. How do you pick? Right. So we took that stress away from each other and forced each other to read things. And yeah. we both made each other sad. Yeah, we did. It was it, April was a very bummer month. Another tortilla of melancholy? Yes, another tortilla of melancholy. Trademark. Trademark. <laughs> I read Safe and Sound from Sloan Kennedy and Lucy Lennox. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many times I texted you and called you an asshole. Uh, at least five. Yeah, you're an asshole. The book was, it was really good. And it I, I called her an asshole because there were sad moments where I like I, I was in love with the characters. And so when they were going through hard moments, I was like, no, no, <laughs> just, just, just cuddle them up and make them okay. It'll be fine. So yeah, it was really emotional and really good. And the characters were great. I don't want to do spoilers on this because this wasn't an official pick that we told people yeah i guess that's fair yeah. okay that's gonna be tough when i talk about my book too so yeah mm, okay so in general i really liked it a lot writing was great the story flowed well my <laughs> absolute favorite character oh god what is his name i highlighted this because is it thomas or something thomas yes okay thomas was my favorite character and my favorite line in the whole book happens in at the very end and I can't talk about it because well you can kind of like in a nutshell like somebody screams yeah somebody scream like like something dramatic happens and makes a loud noise in this office and this guy's assistant runs in with a fire extinguisher like <laughs> just shows up and it was fucking great it was I just <laughs> I adored that moment. It was like the whole thing was great, but that was somehow my favorite moment in the mm-hmm. whole book. It was well, really because great. It, it was such a nice splash of, of comedy in a book that was very serious. Right. Well, I mean, it had a lot of comedy. Like that mm-hmm. was what made the book really enjoyable to me. It was there was a really good balance of despair and things that made me giggle. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know that I'm a big nerd. You are as well. Yes. And it's not really a spoiler to say there's a lot of Star Trek references because of um, there's a coffee shop in the book that's a Star Trek themed coffee shop. And so there's like woven in so many different Star Trek jokes that it, I don't know, it's just, it's charming as hell. And Mm -hmm. I loved it. So thank you and you're an asshole. (laughs) Well, you know what? Back at you. Because your pick was Wolf Song and I'm actually not done. I'm four hours out from the audiobook because I had to turn it off. Because I was crying, like, four times going to work. Because, like, the the book deceptively fills up this happy, wonderful world. And then it's, like, and then after you have your little sandcastle of happy, and you're, like, yay, look how happy everyone is. TJ Klune comes in there and kicks all your shit down. And then you're, like, I know he's going to fix it, but I'm so sad about this. Yeah, so it's been fun, the ride. Yeah. You going through that and, you know, loving that and getting upset and sorry about that. But I'm also <laughs> well, not and sorry. I, <laughs> I, I, and I, I feel like, and I don't know yet because I'm not done, but I feel like it will get better because every time I'm like, but blah, you're like, it's fine. It's okay. Just finish it. But now, to be fair... <clears throat> The book is called Wolf Song. Does that sound like a happy thing to No, you? it doesn't sound like a happy thing. <laughs> and that's, that's why I had been so hesitant to start it is because I knew... Okay, so the only book I've read of TJ's was a uh, Lightning Struck Card. Yeah. And so <laughs> I knew he was good, and but I also knew he could be really funny. And he still is. And it's that book's still, still hilarious. Funny. There's plenty of parts that I cracked up, but like, oh my God, my poor little heart. But that's why you get the guys at the shop through the whole book, because they kind of make everything better. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And, like, it's there, there's a part... Oh, man, I can't talk about it because it'll spoil... Well, no, it won't. So there's a part where <laughs> the main character is a little bit more turned on than he would like in the company of people who could sense it. And at one point, he's trying so hard to not be. And, like, they slowly start picking up that something's wrong. I was in tears. Yes. That whole sequence that you're talking about. And so, again, no spoilers. So we're just... Right, that's why it's super vague, so... Right, so, but if you've read this, you know what we're talking about. That whole art from that moment Mm -hmm. to right before everything kind of shifts. Right. Because werewolves. Ah. Oh, you are good. <laughs> no, that's, that's the opposite of what that was. <laughs> but that is like the heart of the book right yeah, there to me it because really it was is. just, I cried because I was laughing so hard. So mm-hmm. yeah, that book will make you cry the whole way through. I'm really excited and I'm, I'm so glad that you're finally reading this because Raven's song comes out soon. And... Yeah. Yeah. It comes out in July. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and I guess we can kind of segue into the next thing we were going to talk about, which is audiobooks, yeah? Right. So, because you started reading this one and you were doing audio, and it was from Kurt Graves, who right. we've, we've had on the show previously for Gail Carriger's book, I, I wanted to go ahead and jump in because I've, I've read it. I just read it like in print. Mm-hmm. And because you were reading it and I didn't have anything audio going on at the time, I was like, well, fuck it. I'll do it too. <laughs> and so, like, I loved the book before. I did. I absolutely mm-hmm. adored it. You know this because I've been trying to get you to read it since I read it. Mm-hmm. And Kurt is amazing. Yeah, he really, like, he's already amazing. And we've already established that because you listened to uh, Sumage Solution, which, yes. which he narrated. So right. we already knew he was talented. But holy crap, this book, I don't think, I can't imagine anybody else doing it. Like, it, she just does such a good job bringing Ox and everybody else to life. Like, it's just the way that he portrays Ox is so good to me. I really love well, it. Well, and he does the other characters well as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody's great, but man, I love Ox. Yeah. It'll be really interesting because I know he's doing Raven Song as well. Mm-hmm. And we know that that is supposed to be Gordo's book. Right. So that'll be interesting how that goes. Listening to Kurt read the story... It's like that was the way it was meant to be read to me. Like, it it was really, really good. And I don't know. Like, it's honestly, in a lot of cases to me, the audiobook does not give me more than just the book on its own would. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that's due to not great voice actors. Right. (laughs) A lot of that's due to, you know, maybe having read something previously in the series and then jumping into it and it just not being the way I expected it to be. Right. So it kind of takes me out of it, but super good. Yeah, I, we're going to have to reach out to Kurt and see if we can get him back on the show to talk about it since now we've listened to the audiobook for this and now we can just fangirl all, out all over him again. So. And that was his first audiobook, It too. was his first. That's amazing to me. staggering. So, yeah, if, if you couldn't tell, we're fans. <laughs> so, yeah, it's super good. Yeah. Speaking of what you were talking about with going into something, like having read it and then doing audio, I did that with the Temptation series and because I remember it threw me off. I read books like one, two, and three, I think, and then tried to d- jump in on book four or something with audiobook. Since I had gone that long into the series with the character sounding a certain way in my brain, and then hearing somebody else talk like them. The first time I had, I was like, oh no, no, I don't like this. And like had to turn it off. Yeah, but you ended up loving it. I did. And like, I was like, okay, I'm just being a brat. Because I, I guess I just forgot that it was established that Tate's voice was really deep. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't, in my head, I didn't equate Tate being deeper than Logan. So it just, which is so stupid, but in my head, that's the way it was. And so the voice actor is amazing. And so once I actually gave it a shot and stopped being an asshole, I was like, this is actually really good. So I ended up going back and listening to all the other ones because I think they're free on like Kindle Unlimited. So I'm like, all right. So I just, I listened to all of them. I was like, this is so good. Yeah, I, I, re- I really do. But just because I don't have as much time to read as I'd like to have, I do wish that more male male authors could do audio. But yeah, I know, I know with- it's expensive. It's expensive and just with the way that these authors crank things out, Mm -hmm. that's a lot of things Mm -hmm. to do audio with. Like they, I mean... Some of these authors come out with books, like, monthly. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how they have time to do anything. So, they, you know, expecting an audiobook is probably unfair. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I get, I guess, greedy because, like, Sloan, with her books, it's, like, two months later and there's usually an audiobook or something. Or, like, really fast. Yeah. And I, I forget that there are, I think there are, like, thousands of dollars or something. So, I'm like, how are you? Oh, my God. So. Yeah, I did all of thirds in audio. Mm-hmm. And... Those were really good. Oh, dude, I forgot to tell you. Are you subscribed to Charlie Coche's newsletter? No. Okay. Because I'm a shit. No, you're not a shit. <laughs> there's like, there's a hundred freaking authors that we adore. Or if you, you may already be subscribed, but mine got moved into the spam folder in Gmail. Rude. Yeah, so there you go. But she came out with a, a thing recently where the voice actor did like clips of the character saying wacky things as like notifications and, and ringtones and stuff. That's the best thing! It is the best thing! So, yeah, if I'll have to go back and find it. I'm pretty sure I saved it, because I saw it, like, two weeks ago, and I forgot to tell you, because I'm a shit. Yeah, clearly. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I'll have to see if I can link it in the show notes if I can find it, but I was I went and listened to a bunch of them, and Ashes are my favorite. Oh, well, they would have to be, yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh my god, I need to just have him yelling at me every time I get a, self- or a notification. That's, that's pretty pretty great yeah oh yes yeah well that's good information <laughs> yeah I, I totally forgot I, I don't know why that slipped through the cracks slipped through the cracks on the bottom episode oh my god <laughs> i'm editing that out too no <laughs> keep it in i love it Sleep. oh my god we are accidentally so funny no i think we're funny i'm having a good time okay so you want to talk about our bottoms <laughs> 
gift that keeps giving. Oh my god. <laughs> I apologize. No. We've both had coffee. Sometimes it's wine when we do this, but this time it's coffee and it's having an adverse effect. I'm not really sure that this is the best course of action for the future, but we'll see how it goes. You guys can tell us. Tell us if you prefer the coffee version or the wine version of Top to Bottom. So this month we read... All Kinds of Tied Down. From Mary Collins. Yes. Um, and we actually... Did you get to read any of the other ones that you wanted? I did. Okay. Um, I read Frog. Um, okay. In, in our book discussion group, Gail had jumped in and, you know, she was really excited that we were reading Mary. She had right. mentioned, this is Gail Carrigan. When she interviewed with us, she mentioned Mary Combs as one of her favorites in the genre. And so we had to, you know, get to this. And mm-hmm. so she was really excited when we did this and... In the book discussion group, she talked about how Frog was her favorite one. Mm-hmm. So I actually read that one as well. You said you read an extra? I did. So I read A Matter of Time, and did she released she re-released them in like volumes. So books one and two are in volume one. So I read volume one, which is books one and two. And that one was really good because we read all kinds of tied down first. Oh, we're gonna spoil a lot of crap. Spoilers are about to happen. Um so yeah, spoilers. Well, this is gonna spoil what a matter of time's about too. Fuck it. Okay, so in All Kinds of Tied Down, the... Wait. Hmm. Well, it doesn't spoil it. Okay, okay. Are. So full 100% spoilers for All Kinds of Tied Down, which is going to include information about the extra books that she read. Mm-hmm. So if you do not want spoilers, skip to the end. Are you gone? <laughs> Okay, ready to go. Okay, so in All Kinds of Tied Down, the uh, super duper, is he the chief? Yes. Yeah, okay, so Cage is this super badass, hard as hell, like he's terrifying, but you want him on your side, kind of like we'll move the ocean to get to you. His book is a matter of time, like how him and his future love interest meet and the the main character in all a matter of time is named jory and i will say mary combs has a knack for writing oblivious adorable men (laughs) because miro and jory are kindred spirits of oblivious and adorable and it just it makes you want to like hug them and slap them and choke them all at the same time (laughs) because they're they're wonderful and they're sweet and they're funny and you can't help but adore them but they're like missing giant red flags with sparklers and flares of things and they're like eh he's probably not interested i'm like are you kidding <laughs> right now bro so it's it, reading both of those were frustrating in the best kind of ways cuz when once everything does click in the place you're like do you see it now good no kiss <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I really liked shifting back to um, all kinds of tied down. I I really liked Miro and and Ian's dynamic. I love the fact that Ian ends up because when when we were reading it, I expected eventually when they got to the point where they hooked up that Ian was going to be like the top because he's clearly reluctant about being gay and do do do. But then of course he's not and he's the bo- bottom. And I love like big, strong, burly tough motherfuckers being the bottom. So I was like, that's awesome. And yes, I'll let you talk before I keep rambling. Go on. What did you think, Jess? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I really liked it a lot. It was a, there was a lot of action. There was always something going on and something that I thought was really cool about. So I've noticed, I don't remember where I saw this. I don't remember if it was on like an author group I follow or if it was on like a male male romance group I follow, but somebody was talking about, portrayal of women in male male romance about mm-hmm. how they're usually awful yeah yeah i remember seeing that and because somebody pointed it out now i'm very hyper aware of it right well that's something i wanted to really praise mary calms for is that you know there, there weren't a ton of well actually okay so no, there, there's so, more. so miro's friends mm-hmm. catty as they may be were all strong and awesome women yeah they each had were like powerful in their own right as far as like either personalities or or uh, their careers and like just it was awesome and but probably my favorite female character character from that book was the witness he was moving the one that was the uh, oh yeah the wife of the the yeah. mob boss or whatever she was a badass she was she was really cool I, I loved that she like it would be so easy in that situation because there was like a chase scene yeah and like people were after them and it would be really easy to make her be weak and you know freak out at the no man she, she was, was like hauling ass and, yeah. right with him like he even commented that she was like wouldn't she in a dress with sneakers on and she was just like boot like booking it like yeah. it was awesome so yeah that was that was really cool, and I, I do agree with you as far as giving props, because I was fully expecting her eventually to, like, panic or freak out, and she didn't, and of course Miro recognized that too, because he's 
used to seeing people lose their shit because of his line of work. And this chick was just like, okay, what do we need to do? What's next? And I, he got shot too. And she's like, well, what do I need to do? And I'm like, that would be a fucking mess. Well, you know, she had that mom focus of like, right. I have to get out of this and take care of my kids. I mm-hmm. can't lose them or whatever. So I thought that was that was really awesome. Yeah. There was um, in Frog also. So Frog was, was actually a lot of fun. It's a real short one. So you guys have time to, to read and that one. And it's standalone, right? It doesn't tie yeah, in anything? Yeah, completely okay. standalone. And it's about a, a cowboy who meets this doctor while he's him and his, his other like affluent friends come out to this <laughs> ranch to like go see stuff and they like meet and like instantly are like into it. Uh, but it, it kind of goes through their relationship about how he's a drifting cowboy and like goes from rodeos and ranches and does like jobs like that and doesn't you know want to be tied down or whatever. And then this doctor who just can't get enough of this man. Mm-hmm. So he waits, he, he waits until he comes back every single time. And it's, it's like this emotional thing, but it's also really funny, really cute. He ends up coming to visit and then having to take care of, the doctor's sister's children. Oh, wow. And the doctor's sister is this cool professional woman that her husband just left her with, you know, with the nanny and left her with these kids and she needs somebody to help take care of them. Anyway, she's, she's super cool. She's super fun. And she, she's smart and driven and like helps the character come through some things. Like again, a really good, strong female character in a male, male romance, which Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like trying to think back and I can't think of anything I've read. That's been a bad example of that, but because that's now been put in my the yeah. forefront of my mind, now I'm looking for it. Yeah, so. well, it's, it's an easy thing for people to fall into where it's like the crazy ex-wife or the crazy ex-girlfriend or something. And even in the Temptation series with Tate's ex-wife, she was awful at the beginning, but then she ends up being okay. Like, she ends up at least being a decent human being and not just a horrible person. Right. She starts out as a horrible person, but there's also other strong female characters in that. Yeah, it's a good... I mean, we could have a whole podcast about that so that's a that's a good topic any particular parts of the book or lines or anything that you highlighted i didn't highlight anything in this one again the re- the whole reason we read extra books this month is because you and i had both gone through this book so freaking quickly mm-hmm. and i didn't pause to highlight anything yeah i kind of devoured this one really fast yeah too. i will say one of my favorite parts is when they had just recently hooked up and ian was talking about how he was trying to figure out like kind of what he was into and he went to that bdsm club mm-hmm and he like told the guy like okay just go for it i know what the safe word is blah 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 and he was like well, what happened he was like well, i choked him out and he was like you choked you choked him out what happened and he was like i forgot the safe word he's like how do you forget a safe word it was so funny he was like you didn't forget you just didn't bother learning it he's like probably <laughs> that's my favorite part i loved it so much because <laughs> i just imagined him like getting strapped in and being like this is a bad idea like immediately so i don't know it cracked me up but yeah, so she has a, a ton of work that, mm-hmm. you know, everybody should check out. So if you want to go find more from her, you just go to marycalms.com. We'll have that linked in the show notes as mm-hmm. per usual. Yeah, she does have a ton of work. So if welcome to the rabbit hole of Mary Calms, because seriously, <laughs> there's so much stuff to read. And it feels like everyone's read at least one book, so everybody has something cool to recommend. So it's, it's good stuff. Yeah, we had a lot of people that were <laughs> pretty excited about us reading her and, you know, all had their suggestions and opinions mm-hmm. about it. So yeah, we, we recommend it. If you haven't checked her out somehow, do that. For sure. All right. Anything else we want to talk about? I guess that's going to about wrap us up for our bottom episode for April. Join us next week where we're going to be posting our top episode where we're going to be interviewing Catsy Snow. Yeah. She's going to be talking about her newest book that just came out, Sinister Hunger. So definitely go check that out. And uh, until then, we'll see you in in May. Bye. (laughs) Bye.